All right, joining us now is Florida Congresswoman Kat Kamek, uh, joining the show today on this Friday. Congresswoman, good to see you. Thanks so much for coming on. As we just talked about this, we, we, the reporter laid this out, the Build Back Better agenda. You just heard from Senator Manchin. Uh, he, he has been a no on a lot of things when it comes to the spending bill, the reconciliation bill. And according to Axios, Senator Manchin is threatening to delay that agenda, the agenda rather, until next year. This over inflation concerns, which every every American right now is feeling. They're paying more for gas. They're paying more for rent. They're paying more when they go to the grocery stores. Do you agree with Senator Manchin on this? Well, absolutely. This isn't build back better. This is build back broke. And we're seeing it already. It doesn't matter if you're filling up your gas tank, which, by the way, for me, it was $60 this morning, uh, which just this time last year, it was about 35 And if you go to the grocery store getting ready for Thanksgiving in a couple weeks, if you're going to buy your turkey, you know, we like to buy, buy a big turkey and start the defrosting process, you can't find any. I mean, the supply chains are broken. The inflation is killing everyday Americans, especially for those on fixed incomes. So if I were Senator Joe Manchin, I would be holding off for as long as possible. This bill, this whole agenda fundamentally transforms America for the worst. And that is not something that Americans need in the wake of COVID. We know that in states that have these arbitrary lockdowns, they're getting an increase in rates of COVID infections. In my home state of Florida, we have the lowest infection rate in the country. And it's because we didn't do the arbitrary lockdowns. We are blessed with a wonderful governor and state legislature that's fighting to protect our rights. But when you look at this agenda that the Biden administration is pushing, it harms everyday Americans from every walk of life. And it's wrong for America. So I'm hoping that Manchin keeps uh, delaying this. We don't have a CBO score. We know that it's over $4 trillion right now. We know that the egregious parts of it include doubling IRS agents to spy on everyday Americans' bank accounts, paying local reporters, which becomes state-sponsored media. It, it spends more than the com- combined GDP of Mexico and Canada. Tell me what in this bill it builds back America better. It doesn't. It bankrupts America, and that's why we've got to absolutely stop this bill from happening. The bipartisan infrastructure bill has passed uh, Congress. It heads to the president's desk. He's going to sign it Monday. What are your thoughts on that bill? You know, that bill was definitely not worthy of my vote, which is why I absolutely hit the hell no button uh, when presented with the opportunity. Unfortunately, 13 of my colleagues decided that it was worthy of their, their vote. And that's a shame because this bill, the infrastructure bill, it really greased the skids for reconciliation, a.k.a. the Build Back Broke bill. Because it, what it was was about $550 billion worth of Green New Deal programs just to get them started. Now, keep in mind, the Green New Deal does nothing to address climate change. It does nothing to improve our environment. It just grows the bureaucracy and continues to bankrupt America. And that is really, really shameful because only 6% of the bill, this so-called infrastructure bill, was actually infrastructure. Let me jump in, Congresswoman, really quickly. uh, Congressman Bacon, and I spoke with yesterday, uh, Mm -hmm. voted yes for this bill. Uh, He defended it. He says that uh, this slowed down progressives. Is that a valid argument? No. While I respect my colleagues and, and I believe that every every representative goes home to their district and has to explain themselves, they're going to have some explaining to do. They voted for this bill at the expense of our country. And when you look at the districts and you look at the states that voted in favor of this bill, like New York and New Jersey, for example, they made out like bandits. Mm. I understand that, listen, it's important to some members of Congress to bring home the bacon, but quite frankly... We take an oath to defend the United States Constitution, and when our spending has reached a level, when our seniors and our, our everyday working class Americans can't afford basic services and yeah. goods, problem. Let's talk about the working class Americans. Uh, new analysis from the Tax Policy Center showing the Build Back Better agenda would raise taxes for middle class families. I'll show it to you here. Uh, quote, t- taking into account all major tax provisions, roughly 20 percent to 30 percent of middle income households would pay more in taxes in 2022, end quote. Your thoughts on that? Well, we know, I mean, of course, that's we, we know that to be a fact. You can't spend what this, this administration and this Democrat majority have been spending and expect taxes not to go up. 
the Build Back Better, aka Build Back Broke, that's 2.1 trillion in taxes immediately on the middle and lower class. You already have inflation over 6% and rising, right? So that is already effectively a tax on the middle and lower working class. So you have a $1.9 stimulus pa- uh, trillion dollar stimulus package at the beginning of the year that is, is contributing to this. Then you have your normal appropriations that go through. That's $1.2, $1.3 trillion. Then you have a $1.2 trillion infrastructure package. And then you're talking about a possible $4 trillion reconciliation package. Give me a break. Who can afford this package? Who can afford this administration? And I know that Nancy Pelosi doesn't have to worry about things like buying gas and paying for health care and doing the things that us everyday Americans have to do with families and kids. But at the end of the day, she's there to represent and serve her constituents, many of whom are working class families. We need to get back to the basics. We need to get back to shutting down the border, getting our Americans out of Afghanistan, producing legislation that is actually helpful to Americans, not hurtful. And let us just be clear, Republicans and their policies, we are actually the ones looking out for the environment because we know that a healthy economy is reliant on a healthy environment. And so this notion that we're going to have this Green New Deal and it's going to be wonderful and create millions of jobs, that's BS. These mandates that they're shoving down our throats, are going to cost us 84 million jobs around the country. We'll continue and that to, is going to spark the depression. We will continue to talk about that. Congresswoman Kat Kamek joining us live on the show. Have a great weekend. Thank you for your time today.